Hello and welcome to Maritime Innovations. I'm speaking with Charles Pembroke Burst from Hike today, who is the Vice President of Sales. Charles is responsible for the commercial development of Hike's electric ferries and has been leading their market expansion efforts. Charles, nice to meet you. Thanks for taking some time for this interview today. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for taking the time. Of course, you have such an interesting product. So thanks to you for taking the time. I met you uh, at the booth in Oslo, and when I uh, came by, it immediately caught my attention because it's a, it's a fascinating design. It's an interesting product. Um, yeah, t tell me a little bit more about uh, Hike. What is it? A well, Hike is a fully electric uh, ferry. Uh, has it's aut autonomously uh, prepared. Uh, it's built from the ground up to be electric, so it, it is extremely efficient. It's designed for um, short hauls, short traffic. So essentially, it's like a, a bus on the water, trying to take those shortcuts and improve city mobility. Most electric ferries in the market can only operate for two to four hours per, per charge. Well, but Hike achieves 12 plus hours. So tell me a bit about the moment a potential customer first realized they could, could run this all day without charging. So what's their reaction? Yeah, I think um, Hike's being built from the ground up to be electric. Uh, typically, boats in this industry uh, maybe have been retrofitted or I haven't had the expertise and the design that we've put into this to be extremely efficient. So the boat can operate up to 12 hours in optimal uh, conditions, as well as it can go for a range of around 50 nautical miles. So the key here is is not to have uh, the, the anxiety of the boat running out, but to be able to operate all day, uh, which is maybe something of the past with EVs uh, back in the day, and now that has gone past, and, but, Hike has looked forward to the future to really to be able to operate all day and to have that need. We have really looked at every tri situation to see how we can actually put this ferry into operation and it can operate all day without having that anxiety of it's going to run out. Uh, I found this actually very interesting, a very smart move uh, about the charger. So that you have the same charger as for Tesla, right? And 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 what are, what are customers or uh, operators? Uh, how how do they react when you tell them this? Yeah, it, they love it. It is extremely easy. People know it, and you know some people with traditional say electric ferries, uh, infrastructure is a problem. Where hike is not a problem. So infrastructure is catching up, but it's still quite early. So this creates some friction when coming to scaling quickly, especially in places where political and port decisions move slowly. But Hike doesn't really have this problem because we don't need big infrastructure. It just needs a normal car charger or you can you can still charge it uh, with a normal car charger that you have at home as well. You've already uh, got real passengers in Frederikstad. So uh, I read that you have 3,000 uh, per month since April. And uh, for operators looking at uh, a business case, what kind of revenue can they realistically expect from such a vessel? Well, when we're looking at the Frederick case, uh, Frederick's uh, uh, case has been really successful. The people down there have loved it. Uh, it has quite a short uh, uh, travel between two spots. And for a business case, uh, <clears throat> at the moment, it operates with one crew. And like I said, it has been autonomously prepared. So when the rules and regulations come in, we can get rid of the OPEX and maybe just and reduce that captain uh, that needs to be on, on, on board. So with regards to cost to electricity, it's much, much cheaper than running a diesel. It's in Norway, it's nearly free. Uh, definitely some days it's free to charge. Uh, so the, the return of investment has been amazing down in in Fredrikstad and as a commercial pilot has been excellent. You talked about uh, autonomy prepared so with automatic docking I guess and but realistically so let's say you have, you have all the people on board kids potentially unattended maybe there are some water accidents with other other smaller boats safety concerns how autonomous uh, can these ferries uh, potentially be at the end what, what's a human supervision reality here 
I think we're at a stage uh, where we're up to where we're using uh, a partner called Zbus for our, our autonomy, and it can they have the possibility to have the ferry to be fully autonomous. Uh, but in some of their projects uh, that they that they're having, they have uh, like a standby captain just there to monitor everything, which is which is where it needs to be at the moment uh, with reg regulations and and a lot of testing coming through. When you talk to operators who, who might want to buy three to five vessels for, for the area, uh, coming from your startup scaling experience, uh, what's been the biggest uh, surprise about managing an electric fleet compared to uh, traditional diesel ferries? Good question. It's always uh, trying to drive uh, behavior and change uh, from that, the old traditional style. So we're not really trying to sell a vessel, maybe like you like you say. We're, we're inviting people to rethink urban mobility. That takes time, especially when we're asking people to adopt something new. But that's also what makes it pretty exciting, this space. You mentioned that you have really uh, good ratings, so five-star ratings, almost five-star ratings. So what do passengers love most uh, from, from the short experience already? And where are some small challenges or where they are a little bit unhappy with? Uh, I'm not sure so unhappy with, but one of the biggest challenges is simply visibility for us. So getting more people to experience the boat. So once they do, they love it. Uh, but in a new and innovative category like electric ferries, we can put in brackets autonomous there as well. Uh, part of the job is educating uh, the market and showing what's possible. We had a Singaporean delegation uh, only a few weeks ago that came down and rode on it. And in quotes, they said it's like riding on a uh, magic carpet because there's no vibrations. It's quiet. The boats don't rock. Uh, very stable. Uh, and this was contrast when they went and moved over to the older ferries in Fredrikstad and on the same day. And they said it was... It's totally different. Once you're on the boat uh, with uh, nearly roof to ceiling glass just skipping across uh, the water, it's a magical experience and something you sort of don't forget. Talking about Singapore, um, since Maritime Innovations is incorporated in Singapore, um, I know the weather there can be quite rough, uh, talking about monsoon rains, water sprouts, uh, whatnot, but looking at Norway, very different place. But, I mean, April is nice, maybe June is May, June as well, but what about the winters and heavy weather? What, what do you expect or where are the, the limits here? Yeah, I think the limits, because we're, we're, we're quite wide as a vessel, so we're trying to reduce uh, to traditional hull where it's uh, that traditional V-shape, so stopping rocking. But with regards to the weather, it's, it has uh, air conditioning, has the heat pump and air conditioning in there, and it can be closed down to be. Uh, warm or, or cool inside depending on the conditions and can can be hidden away from the elements as well uh, but the doors can be open so you can be outside and have that experience uh, in and outside as well and uh, what do operators need to know about maintenance so what what do they need to expect to do uh, and uh, is there a big retraining let's say if you switch from a diesel fleet now to to your products to your vessels is it very complicated for for the existing uh, maintenance crews to get retrained here yeah i think maintenance just like an electric car is very low uh, zero to nothing uh, is doing your annual inspections of the hull and 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 doing those things but a very low maintenance uh, to, to, to traditional vessels Uh, and regards to uh, your other comment with training, we, we supply uh, training to the people that are purchasing the vessel. And we also, also have uh, a simulation of our vessel. So we actually had the captain from Fredrikstad come and use our simulator. And he said it's like the real thing. The boat is the, the, the simulator and what you experience uh, on the boat is pretty much the same thing. So that's something we can offer to people when they purchase the boat, but also getting on the boat and, and driving it themselves. Uh, so this is what we offer, because I think it's very crucial when operating a new boat is to understand how it, how it works, especially when you're coming into docking and, and, uh, and other elements that come into play. And for maritime professionals watching this now and who are evaluating uh, their own routes, uh, 
How do you help operators figure out if their specific uh, route is viable for electric and especially for hike? What's your assessment process here? Yeah, we always do a route analysis. So we we need to know where, where the stops are, uh, how long between the stops, how fast they want to go, uh, and what are the requirements as, as well as infrastructure that is around uh, for pontoons or, or for charging. So we do a whole analysis for them down to the timetabling and speed that needs to be done. So we do quite a lot of the, the heavy lifting to make the business case for them. You have vessels planned for Hoxton in 2025. Paint me a picture. What do smart city water and transport networks look like in five years from now? Five years, I think it's it is the world is sort of our apple in a way, or our peach, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have a lot of interests uh, around Europe uh, at the moment, and that um, Singaporean delegation we've made a, a partnership with uh, a manufacturer down there because we see a lot coming down in Asia as well uh, that are needing this type of vessel. So. Regards to numbers, we're going to keep them close to our chest, uh, but the, the future looks uh, very good for Hike. Excellent, excellent. Thanks so much, Charles, for taking the time for this interview. I uh, really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you.